Well, good evening, everybody. So tonight we have on the bench the All Powers R1500 portable power station. And I've got the desire again to kind of see what's inside. So let's open her up and see how well she's built. So I've had this power station for a few months now and I've run it through, you know, a handful of different tests, which I've made several videos about. And I've wanted to see what the build quality on the inside looks like, because I mean, like any power station, the outside can look vastly different from the inside. And so I kind of want to see, is it as clean and as sleek on the inside as it is on the outside? And this looks like it shouldn't be too bad to get into the shell. You know, famous last words. Let's see what it's going to take to get this thing opened up. So I know right off the bat, they seem to use hex screws on the different spots of the inverter. Uh, there's, there's four screws on either side to pull off the side plates. Uh, there's a handful underneath. And then there's a handful of plugs that have to get pulled out to split the shell apart. From looking at the side here, I believe the use a two millimeter hex on the side screws and then on the bottom and then the, uh, I guess you could call it the, the clam shell that comes together, they use a, a four millimeter hex. And as I go through the beginning of this, I will give my typical disclaimer that do not do this. This does void your warranty. comes off just as easy as that side does. Oh, wow, that's tight. Ooh, that one was really loose. I wonder if I loosen these top ones, if I can take this back section off without loosening the whole bottom piece. Yep. All right, so it is being held in up here somewhere still. Oh, there goes a pop. Oh, there goes a crack. There. That's in there. Very tight. We've got a few cables here. So the wireless charging pads. These connectors were a little bent for, it was probably me pulling on things. So on the sides, in the finger well, there is a rubber piece that spans this entire handle. And so I have to peel this back so that I can open up this seam here. So now split it apart. There's our back section. Nice, nice thick plastic. Seems like it could take some abuse. And then the first look at the inside. I think I need to unscrew those other three screws on the bottom to be able to pop this front off. And these bottom ones are barely finger tight. Slide this front apart. Oh, look at that. So looking down inside, we've got one, two, three. We've got a, a ground line there, four. Another five and a bundle six right there. Let's take a peek just with that clamshell opened up. And I did discharge this down to 5% as far as I could get it to discharge uh, on the AC side. So their board is branded all powers. So they I wonder if they, may they must make their own boards. Massive heat sink along the back. There's some... MOSFETs right back there, big capacitors, a couple of relays right here. Everything is zip tied and bundled in this protective cable wrap. We've got black cable wrap and some white. And then they labeled the different lines. Oh, this is the BMS. Okay, yep, 
balance leads here and here. P minus, P positive. Fortunately, I can't see what gauge wire they have, but it's definitely a silicon wire. I won't claim to know exactly what I'm looking at here. At least not everything. Battery minus right here. We got everything disconnected except for this ground lead right here. So here's a close up of the back of the displays. And then the bottom section down here is the AC side. See, all these boards I see branded with all the All Powers logo, so I'm assuming they they make them themselves. And we get a look at the cells they're using here. 32 700s. 6,000 milliamp hour, June 28th, 2023. A temperature sensor right here. Oh, I like this. So around the corners where it wraps, they put protective tape to protect anything from rubbing on it. Our expansion battery connections seem to be daisy chained together. And then they come out these two black lines here and here, and they connect directly to the BMS. They've got this aluminum plate that sits I mean, I could take the plate off, but that a little loose there. Yeah, that screw's loose. I'm not saying my screw's loose. We already knew that. This side has a bunch of cables going down to the lower section. So I'm going to see if I can just pop these plugs out. The plugs are not in there very tight. Just trying to be very gentle with wires and cables and, and everything. So they do have some layer of epoxy board across the top. And for some reason, underneath the board, they only have what looks to be adhesive on the one side of the cells versus the other side. And then down here at the bottom, they have some kind of black fabric tape, which is holding the epoxy board down. You can see underneath, we've got our different set of cells in bunches of what looks to be uh, 2S and 4P. So you can see here, the green side is the positive side and then the blue side is the negative side of the cells. So from left to right, they're going into a series connection. So you've got 3.2 volts from one cell seriesed into the next cell, which makes it 6.4 volts. And then they've got four in parallel. So that would be six times four is 24 amp hours for that pack. And then there's four packs on the top four packs on the bottom. So simple math, simple 6.4 times eight, eight packs gives us 51.2 volts. And then we've got 24 amp hours per pack times 51.2 volts gives us 1228.8 watt hours for the entire power station. So as I was disassembling this, I noticed on the power input side, there's two warning stickers, one on the top and one on the bottom. And the warning sticker says, this label will turn red when get wet, no warning if product get water in. The top one is red, the bottom one is not. And then if you take a look on the top of the power station, there's actually four screws with rust signs on them. Well, I got it all put back together, and I actually went through and dumped power from my Blue Eddy into here just to make sure that, you know, charging was working properly. <laughs> um, I mean, I can turn on the different options. If I plug in a USB device, it works. 
And if I plug in something into the AC outlets, I get 110 volts. So all in all, the quality of the build is, is not too bad. We didn't see any loose wires all over the place. They were all nice and tidy, you know, zip tied, and then they had their cable protectors on them. But, you know, a few things that jumped out to me that I did not like was the fact that a lot of the hardware for the case itself was very loose. You should expect it to feel snug. I mean, at least snug. But it, it felt like half of the screws were not torqued down. And then we saw that that plate on the inside was not screwed down completely. So that, that's gonna move. I mean, anytime you pick this thing up and set it down, that whole plate is gonna shake. And then the last thing was the fact that there was moisture at some point in time inside this unit. We saw the, the one sticker at the top showed that it had been affected by moisture, the one at the bottom had not, and then we saw those four screws right on top of the cells <laughs> that had rust marks on them. So those, those were, you know, kind of concerning to me. But uh, that's it for another teardown. I've got another one coming up here. Oh, I don't know when it'll be, but we'll, we'll try to do another one here shortly. Now with that, I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all stay safe, stay warm, and we'll catch up with you later.